For a ship that never saw the water, that never got a detailed design, and that was never even really looked at as a proper warship, few are the ships that are as well known as the ideal battleship for the British fleet. If you can hear the quotes in that, that's for a reason. It is certainly true that navies were already looking at an all-big-gun warship concept before this design was put out. It is equally certain that, while it certainly shaped public opinion and made navies look closer at the concept, the ideal battleship was really far from ideal. It was a step forward, but nowhere near as revolutionary as Dreadnought would prove. And yet, for all of that, it still comes up in discussion nearly 120 years later. Because, well, fundamentally, it was the first time that the idea of a battleship armed with only big guns entered the public mindset. Even had Dreadnought or South Carolina or Satsuma not been coming along prior to the ideal battleship, it's fairly likely that something would have come after it. If only because once the genie is out of the bottle, there isn't any putting that back in. So, what's the genesis of this ship, and what was it really about had it been built? As with any ship, it starts with a man. A man whose name I will probably mispronounce. Vittorio Cuneberti? A prominent naval officer and ship designer, he had already made a name for himself in his work with for the Italian Navy. In fact, his work for the Italian Navy could be argued as shaping battle cruisers, or at least Grotzekreutze, just as his later work did for Dreadnoughts. Not directly, but certainly in a sense of being related to design trends and pushing them along. Because his previous work was the Regina Elena-class battleship, the pre-Dreadnought that went faster than Dreadnought herself, in spite of using older-style propulsion. Those who have watched the German videos will recall that this shaped Kaiser Wilhelm in regards to his desire for a fast battleship. So you can see the connection there, even if it definitely wasn't intentional on Cuneberti's part. In any event, Cuneberti would springboard from this towards pushing a more advanced design. At first, as one could probably expect, he would try to interest the Italian Navy the Regia Marina, in his designs and ideas. He was Italian, he had already worked with that navy, I mean, it only makes sense. However, the great bane of Italian military construction comes in. That being lack of money, and not in the sense of, Congress won't give us money, but just plain, Italy did not have the money. That's a recurring theme with them, because as much as Italy wants to be a great power, they just did not have money or resources. To his credit, though, Cuneberti did actually realize this. His later article, and a large part of this video is taken directly from that article, would state that only the richest of navies could afford such a warship. It should come as little surprise, then, that the article in Jane's Fighting Ships, which was very new at the time, put so much focus on the Royal Navy instead. You know, ideal battleship for the British fleet and all. That article, published in 1903, came about because of the Italian refusal. It would feature the latest iteration of Cuneberti's hypothetical all-big-gun battleship design, something that had begun before the Elena class and had now evolved into its final form. The ship in question was, in most ways, an anachronistic mix of different design features. The all-big-gun layout that would become standard. Made into a layout of turrets that strikes one as... inefficient at best. Resembling more a contemporary armored cruiser, or perhaps the Lord Nelson's with the twin and single-wing turrets swapped around. Though, for 1903, this isn't quite as obsolescent as it may seem, ignoring for a moment that the various Dreadnoughts would soon have a better layout. Or that, much as Dreadnought herself, the ship would have no notable secondary battery, save for some light anti-torpedo boat guns. Regardless, Cuneberti was on the right track. His ship was designed, 
or at least the article laid out a design, with 12 12-inch guns. He insisted on the ship being faster than any existing battleship. His ideal ship was to have 12 inches of armor on both the belts and the turrets. All of these features are, steps forward, in isolation. In practice, it's extremely debatable that the technology of 1903 was up to that task. Dreadnought, a larger ship in most dimensions, was slower and carried two fewer guns, and that was with her turbine power plant. Cunaberti, and again this is direct from the article, was putting forward a concept for 12 12-inch guns, 12 12-pounder guns, a 12-inch belt that stretched the entire length of the ship, there's no lowering thickness here, and a speed of at least 24 knots. All on 17,000 tons. This is, for the record, about a couple thousand tons less than the full load on Dreadnought would turn out being. Dreadnought had substantially less armor, two less 12-inch guns, and a speed of 21 knots. The ideal battleship was slightly shorter than Dreadnought, while having the exact same beam. As anyone who knows naval engineering can tell you, the shape of a ship is just as important to speed as the power provided. As such, I find it very difficult to imagine a ship like this going 24 knots. Compare and contrast to Invincible, which did go 25 knots on a longer hull with a slimmer beam. All of this being said, Cunaberti was not so much doing a detailed design as suggesting a concept. It's fairly likely that he was pushing this up, trying to get people interested, while knowing this was promising something that really couldn't happen. In the end, it doesn't matter, really. Cunaberti's ideal battleship, his invincible colossus, quoting the man again, would never be built. Considering the promises placed on it, this was likely a good thing. It would have been nearly impossible to build a ship with these specifications on the tonnage and dimensions suggested. And as Dreadnought did everything this ship could do anyway, near enough, on a more logical layout, it can be said that navies dodged a bullet in focusing on their own designs. The Italian Dante, the Japanese Satsuma, at least the original design of it, the American South Carolina or the German Nassau, or the Russian Gongu, the French Corbet, Dreadnought, all of these ships do owe something to Cunaberti's design, if only in the way it pushed things forward in the public eye. But it's hard to imagine that any of these navies would have been better off building the ideal battleship. <laughs>